Hi everybody, I'm Jennifer Tryon and we are finally embroidering onto terry cloth today. This is a live I wanted to bring you before uh, Easter, but you know, the stars did not align, technically speaking. So the project is still super cute and the technique is one that you can really take with you um, to, to kind of monogram until your little heart's content. Um, today I'm doing this Cottontail Farms. Um, look how cute this hand towel is for spring, for Easter. Um, I tend to leave this kind of stuff up most of the spring and not just, uh, <laughs> not just uh, take it down um, after the Easter holiday. And since I'm bringing this to you now, I thought, hey, it's still cute, it's still good. And it's such a good example of monogramming or embroidering onto terry cloth because look, you know, these are just store-bought hand towels. I got them at HomeSense or if you're watching from the US, like a uh, Home Goods. Um, so they were very inexpensive, but terry cloth has, you know, loops in it. And so it, which is called like a pile. And if you were to just embroider right on top of the terry cloth, you would lose that thread. You wouldn't be able to read, you know, strawberries, lettuce, uh, carrots as well as you can right now. And I'm going to show you a bit of a trick on how your um, embroidery onto uh, terry cloth will stand out on its own and not get lost in that deep terry cloth pile. Um, all right, let me just call up the, uh, the Facebook post here and see if there's any questions and see who's tuning in. Where are you guys tuning in here from today? I love knowing where you guys are watching from. Um, let's refresh. Okay, there we go. We're going to start by hooping up the towel and you know, hooping it up is half the battle because you want things to be centered. So I've got, um, I've got my hoop. I'm using the RE20 hoop from Janome and the machine I'm using is this one here. It's the Janome uh, 9850. And this is a beauty of a machine because it's a dual sewing and embroidery machine. And what's great about that is you can switch between sewing and embroidery, which is, which is great, but it's still got the footprint of a regular sewing machine. All right, I'm taking some um, fairly heavy tearaway stabilizer and I'm just gonna hoop it up here. So you'll notice I'm hooping the stabilizer, not the towel. The towel is gonna float on top. Well, I'm gonna put some pins in it, but that's what they call it in an in embroidery world. When you don't hoop up your main fabric, it floats on the top. But the last thing we really want is it for to actual float. We want it to be like nice and solid on there. Okay, so because I didn't bring over my paper scissors, I'm just gonna tear this which normally I don't dare use my fabric scissors just in case, even though I'm not sure if you can use fabric scissors on tearaway stabilizer, but I never risk it. All right. I dropped my towel and I'm on a chair here. Yes, I'm hobbling Kathy because of the foot. <laughs> As many of you who've been tuning in to me on our virtual weekend know I have a broken foot and complications from the foot and I'm feeling a bit better. All right, so I'm gonna show you something here and now we've got a little white on white up top so it makes it a little uh, tough to, to see but what you've got, what you're looking at is the Janome cloth setter and I'm just gonna um, try to get as wide as I can up top here so you can really see this contraption here. It's big, I have a video on my YouTube channel about the cloth setter, um, setting it up and showing you how to um, do it, but I, I'm going to I'm going to use it today because what it does is it allows you these hooks up here are exactly as they would be uh, measured out on your uh, embroidery machine, so you can literally lock in your hoop, bring down the arm, and know that it's completely centered because this is all lined up with your embroidery machine. So when I wanna take my towel, for example, 
and line it up, I know that this, this arrow here, that's where my needle down first position is going to be and my, my design is going to be centered around this. So when I'm hooping this up, even my best guess might not get me directly to the center. So to find the center, what I like to do is fold in half. Well, first I'll fold it in half lengthwise because I want to do the back side of it now. And then to find the center, I'm going to fold in half again here. and fold in half again. So I, I basically want to this point right there to be my center. So I'm just going to take a pin and put it right in here. And let's just for fun try, just with the naked eye, to try and center that dot up in the hoop. You know, you can try your best to like shimmy and I think that looks about centered. So if I were putting that on the machine and hooping it up, you know, that would be my center point. But this allows me to test it out first. Oh, <laughs> okay. See how far off I am the actual center point. So now I know I need to shuffle this over and now I'm actually centered. And that's really the key. That's where the cloth saver earns its keep <laughs> because just that little, you know, inch over could make the difference between something that you fully embroider out and then end up tossing because it ends up being like a skew on your, on your towel or on, on your fabric or especially if you were doing something on a pre-made shirt. Like let's say you wanted to put like the logo here or something like it really needs to be right there. You really don't want it to be right, right here. <laughs> like you got to have it in the spot you need it. So this is a really great way to ensure that you don't end up with any of those uh, tragic placement accidents. So I'm just taking regular um, sewing pins and going to put them in my towel, like right through the stabilizer. So I've unhooked it there. Some people also will use spray stabilizer now. Um, make sure you take it off of the cloth setter if you're going to use spray, like temporary spray adhesive. Um, because otherwise, if the spray adhesive touches your um, paper and the paper touches the, like the back of the cloth setter, ask me how I know. <laughs> this here is like paper that's stuck to the back of the cloth setter. I'm just going to check and see if there's any questions. Um, I know lots of people have been asking lately if an embroidery machine is something they need. I mean, need. <laughs> is this a need? Uh, is it a want? Um, yes. A need? Hmm. Well, I definitely think I could not go back to not having an embroidery machine. It's one of those things that once you've got it, it's in your repertoire and you just, you will use it because you can all of a sudden do like all of these things that open up to you. Whereas if you enjoy sewing, you know, you enjoy sewing and making things and this is just a whole nother element to that. Okay. So remember I told you that there in, in the description here, there is a trick to making sure that your pile. So your design here, doesn't get lost down into the grooves of the loops of the towel. So see how, like, you know, the O it's, you know, the towel still really poking through that. Oh, that's what we want. And we can still make out the word, you know, strawberries, lettuce. That's because it didn't get lost down in the pile of terry cloth. And the way you do that is, use a water soluble stabilizer on top. So what I've got here is a water soluble stabilizer. This is the ultra, um, Solvi.
from Sulky. And I was trying to see if I had a discount code. Um, you could try it. I don't know if it still works. I haven't been able to test it yet today. Um, but during our homemade uh, virtual weekend, Sulky was good enough to give us a discount code and it was homemade 15 uh, for 15% off your purchase. So if you're looking for stabilizer, <laughs> that might be a, a good thing to check out. Anyway, um, you want to be generous and make sure that it goes right across your entire hoop and you can pin it down right on top. Joanna saying, or Joanne saying, I have the M7 Continental, the world of embroidery, and now I need an embroidery machine. I know. It's, it's, it is a slippery slope, Joanne. You've got the M7, so you really have everything you need in terms of sewing. Um, that's a, a beautiful, beautiful machine. Um, so, you know, for someone like you that might not want um, a dual sewing and embroidery machine, then you might opt for something like the, uh, the Janome 500E or the 550E if you want it to be really fancy. Or maybe you do like having a second sewing machine available to you that's pretty high end that can do a lot of the things that you want it to do because you don't want to be moving around the M7 because it's so heavy. This little machine here, the Janome um, 9850, it is a dual machine and it's the, a regular footprint. So it's the size of a fairly regular size sewing machine, like not a big bulky sewing machine, but it does do sewing and embroidery and so I like that you can have the option of doing whichever one you need. So if you ever take your machine or want to take your machine somewhere, but don't want to bring your big, big, super expensive machine, you can, but you still have one of the largest hoops out there available with this machine. This machine's coming with three hoops. Um, um, it's got, it's going to be on sale on TSC if you're in Canada. Um, when are we on? Sunday, Monday. Yeah, TSC, we're going to be on Sunday and Monday. So that's uh, April 11th and 12th. And we're going to have this machine. We're going to have the Skyline S9, which is, I would say, the model up from this that does the same thing. A bit of a bigger footprint on that. And then we're going to have the Air Thread Serger. And we're going to have the Janome CPX 1000 cover hem machine. Now that's an upgrade for sure. If you have got a serger already um, and you've been wondering what's next, the cover hem is what's next. That's, that's such a good one. So all of these are going to be on sale. They always do like a 12, six payments or 12 payments because it's going to be like the big main item of the day. It's a big sewing show. There's going to be tons of threads on. I think there's going to be a few of these cloth setters available. Um, if that's something that you've been looking for, the cloth setter is always a good one to pick up. Lots of thread and bobbins. There's sewing tables and chairs. It's a big sewing day, so there's lots of cool stuff. Okay. So now this is hooked into the cloth setter. I've got it um, all pinned up, both on top of my stabilizer, my cloth that's floating there, it's pinned on. I could use the magnets because the, the um, hoop does have magnets, but the terry cloth is a bit thick. So I'm actually not going to do that. And um, I can basically take it off now and know that it's going to be, why don't I just show you one more time in case you're just tuning in. Does the serger replace the cover hem? No, 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 no. You use the serger first and then the cover hem typically. So you would use the serger on the insides of your seams and then you would use the cover hem um, sort of for the cover like it says to like if you're wearing a t-shirt right now for example which I'm not of all the days um, but if you fold under your your t-shirt cuff you'll usually see like a double row of stitches on the bottom side of your t-shirt or on your your cuff sleeve and then you'll see sort of an overlocked stitch behind 
the cover hem is doing that, the overlock stitch and then those um, dual stitches on top. And later this week, I'm gonna do a live where I show you the difference between the cover hem and uh, the serger. So I'm gonna use the air thread serger and I'm gonna use the cover hem machine. What day did we say we we're gonna do the live? Thursday? Thursday. So Thursday around the same time, tune in. I will do a live on the cover hem and the serger and maybe we'll make some leggings or a t-shirt with stretchy material to really show you how you can finish off the edges and the difference between the cover hem and the serger. Okay, so now I know this is hooked up and it's centered. That's gonna be my needle down position. So the cover hem is not an overlock. Um, the serger is an overlock. The cover hem is a finishing hem. So to finish your, your, the outside of your seam. So if you have to turn something up and put the stitches down, it allows you to basically give you that overlock stitch on the back, but a straight stitch in the front while maintaining that elasticity. If you were doing that with a regular sewing machine and, and putting down a straight stitch and you were to walk in a knit, you would break the whole chain. You'd be like, you know, when your legs moved, that would happen. All right, so now that it's um, hooped up, I'm gonna show you how to call up your design because what's great about a machine like this is, let's see if I can actually find it here. Embroidery online, hold on. So let me see. Nope, nope. Let me see if I can find this um, design here. Well, actually, I don't even need to find it. All that to say, when you find a design that you love on you know some kind of site and you're downloading it like etsy or uh, embroidery online or embroidery library there's tons urban threads there's tons of amazing online um, digital embroidery file shops and that's where i got you know this i'm always like looking for the cute cutest ones and i'm forever downloading them and you basically will take it from the download from your computer over to your machine via USB key. And so that's what I'm going to do is I've basically taken the USB key put it in the machine and now I'm in embroidery mode and now I'm going to open it up. So in the machine you've got all kinds of designs that are already built in. So like we've got this great, you know, peacock and butterflies and literally pages and pages of designs. So, you know, you don't have to download like this, this deer is like one of in squirrel and there's a dress and a chandelier and a shoe and there's ton mushroom, a little gnome. Honestly, I've done all of these on tea towels for Christmas. And so you don't have to like buy more designs. There are tons of them already built in. Like even sayings like your, you know, mom and, Anyway, you can l go through them forever, and but there are lots built in, just to say. So if I were to press the little file folder, then it brings me to where I can either choose something that I've already saved in here. So you can see I have saved Cottontail already because that's in the computer's memory, which is this button right here. Over here is the USB key, and that's my embroidery folder. So when I bring my USB to my computer, I will see on that key EMBF. And that's where I need to put my design is in that folder so that the machine can read it. Oh, EMBF has my little uh, llama in there. Can I turn the page? No, it has the llama. Okay, so I've already, s all right, X. I'm gonna open back up my cottontail design. So it's already saved on there. So I obviously already took it off the USB last week when I was prepping to do this live for <laughs> then and couldn't. So now the machine itself is getting itself ready. It's telling me to put on the RE20A hoop. So if you're new to embroidery and have no idea what any of these things mean, the machine will help you out because you can see on here, it's showing right here, this is the RE20A hoop. And it's basically like a, uh, is it a nine by seven or eight by seven size hoop? And I know it's hard to see. Let me see if I can get it to catch the light. There we go. Um, and it's the same size hoop that comes with the S9. So if, you're, if you don't have the budget for the S9, 
this is a really great option. This machine doesn't have Wi-Fi, but honestly, everything that you can do on the S9 in terms of embroidery, you can do on here. You just can't uh, use the Wi-Fi to transfer your designs. You're gonna use the USB instead. So one thing, since this design, it'll tell you on there exactly how long it takes to stitch out. And it'll also tell me how many thread colors I need to use, how many times I need to change the thread. And so it's saying it takes 38 minutes. And there's nine colors involved. And all of those colors, if you look down here, are in this list that we can kind of jump through and you can kind of see them all. So you know what threads to have ready. Or you can change the colors yourself um, to, to customize them. The other thing that you can do, which is what I've done here, is I've already done this, this design halfway because I don't, I don't want to make you sit through 38 minutes. I'll only make you sit through the last few minutes. So you can see I've already stitched out the bunny and um, you know the flowers and some of the words and I'm just about to finish Cottontail and you'll, so that you can really get to see it. So I'm gonna hoop it up here. And what I love about this machine is that I can do this. If I'm, let me make sure my needle's all the way up. So I'm not catching, I'm not catching on a hoop. There we go. So I'm locking the hoop into place. And as you can see, the design is halfway done. So how do I get back to where I left off? Well. Last week when I was going to do this design, <laughs> I started it and I just made a note, stitch 8771. So see here, this is a total of 11,390 stitches. What I need to do is get back to stitch 8771 because that's where I left off. So as long as you keep your project on the hoop, you can go back to whatever stitch number you left off at and pick up right where you left off. It's reminding me to raise the presser foot if I want to like move this stuff around. So now I'm going to go and get as close to the 8000s as possible. All right. And, um, and now I just basically need to get to the stitch number that I need. Now on some machines, it'll let you type in the number. Or you can just go manually like this, where I'm holding down that plus button. And you can see it's going through all of those stitches and it's going up by hundreds at this point. And so if you ever need to check, if something didn't stitch out quite right and you need to go through the design like, or it skipped a stitch or the thread broke. All right, here I'm at 8,600 now. So I'm just gonna start to pay attention to make sure I can line this exactly up. So I wanna stop at 8,771. All right, I'm at 8780, so now I'm just gonna go back. 8771, that's exactly where I left off. So now I know when I press start with that same color thread in the machine, we're gonna be ready to go again. All right, I have all my threads down here on my embroidery scissors. Press her foot down, and all I need to do is press start. Now I'm going to stop after those few stitches and lift the presser foot up and I'm going to bring my scissors over because it's good to um, snip the bottom thread so that you're not just sewing over it. And I like these, uh, the bent bill scissors because it gets right underneath the um, presser foot. So that's kind of nice to have that. So this has got eight minutes left, but that's because I've got it on the slowest speed here. I can turn this right up, the speed control. And now it's only got six minutes left. <laughs> this is sort of like on the GPS when you're speeding and you're like, yay, I just cut three minutes off my trip. Woo! That's what the speed control will do here, but no tickets will be issued. <laughs> <laughs> and
And you know, what's great about embroidery compared to regular sewing is that there's a lot of just like setting it up, picking your design and letting the machine do the heavy lifting. You know, I have heard people say, oh, embroidery is sort of like cheating. Eh, let them talk. I still made it. <laughs> I don't care. But the reason why I wanted to um, have a lot of this stitched out ahead of time is because, you know, watching it embroider is very soothing, I will say. But it doesn't make for great, you know, viewing on TV. So I'll get it stitched out because I also want to show you how to remove um, what you've got here because um, there's a little key to getting your water soluble stabilizer off the top. And you can see because you've laid down that stabilizer first, everything is stitched on top of it. So it kind of has laid down that um, pile of you know, loops in the terry cloth. It's flattened them right out so that it can stitch over top which is really the key to making sure you've got a good, crisp, clean embroidery onto terry cloth. Regular fabric, you don't have to do this step. It's because this has got this pile, this big, um, like loopy fabric that you wanna make sure that things are staying nice and flat. Now, if you were doing a knit or something that had like a little bit of, um, fuzz or a weave or kind of felt a little like um, like it had a pile on it. Maybe this is a, and, and you weren't having any luck embroidering just on its own. This is a technique you could try because this Solvi, um, in case you're just watching from here, this is what I use. Um, the water soluble stabilizer just lets you stitch right on top. It's super thin, but lets you maintain the fabric around the stitching. Um, so that your stitching doesn't get lost inside the bunchiness of that fabric. All right, I'm just going to see if there's any other questions that have come up here. Joanne's saying, there's so many projects uh, that one can do on the embroidery machine. It is a slippery slope, Joanne. I'm telling you, once you start embroidering things, you'll wonder why you waited so long. Um, and that's what I actually like about the dual machine like this. Um, is that if you're not embroidering and you do want or need a higher end uh, sewing machine or you want your second sewing machine to be as good as your first sewing machine, that's why I mostly, I, I have dual machines. Um, they, they serve that purpose because they're not always in embroidery mode. Um, if I need to switch it back, I can and not sacrifice you know, any of the automation and computerization uh, that comes on a big machine like this. That's finishing out. Any other questions um, that anyone might have? I'm just going to go back in the... Uh... Oh, Joanne's saying, no, no, I want the S9. The S9 is good. Joanne, are you in Canada? Because I'm going to tell you guys, if you're watching, that this machine is about $1,000 less than the S9 will be. Both will be on sale, but this one's going to be about $1,000 less than what the S9 is going to be on sale for. Um, on TSC. I'm trying to think if I, I, I think it's going to be around 2000 and the S9 is going to be around 3000. And both of those, I think the S9 I know is regular 5200 and I think this one's regular 3800, I want to say. So both of them are going on crazy sale, even though that's still like a lot of coin. I, I get that. I get that. Embroidery machines are addictive. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. It's true. Well, Nancy LeDrew, what are you thinking about? Uh, do you need an embroidery machine or is it something that you can wait for? <laughs> I know it's one of those things that's hard to, sometimes hard to justify, but it is because it does feel a bit like a toy. And, um, but I can tell you, I've had tons of people ask me to make them things, customize them things. So if you were ever thinking of doing or having a sewing business, um, you really need an embroidery machine because people will pay for customization. All right, let me make sure my needle is all the way up before I pull this towel out because I don't want it 
hooking on the loops. We've got the extra high lift here so it can come right out. Aw, cute! I love this design. <laughs> I feel like it looks, it's so cute. Okay, so when you're taking it off, I'm just going to unscrew and pop it out. Now remember, it's only the um, stabilizer that's hooked in here, so that can just come out. So we've got a little bit of work to do before this is totally ready. Obviously we're going to pull the pins out. So Jackie is wondering if you buy on TSC, who takes care of the service of the machine? So um, if you buy on TSC, the Janome warranty is still the Janome warranty and you can take it to any place that honors Janome warranty. So wherever your local um, sewing machine dealer, or you can send it directly to Janome themselves and they can handle, um, you know, the warranty repairs. Um, but no matter where you buy a sewing machine, you probably want to take it to a sewing machine dealer to get serviced. So there's nothing lost by, by buying it on TSC. TSC, uh, like Janome is still responsible for the warranty and they still operate through dealers. So yeah, you're, you're good to go. All right, I just cut a few of those threads. I will say if you've got threads, cut them now while the water soluble stabilizer is still on because if you wait until you take the water soluble stabilizer off you'll start cutting those loops because there's just so many of them but here it's all flat and covered by this so my scissors far less is not going to hook into anything the same way it would hook into stuff here so try to trim all the threads you can before you take the stabilizer off. So that goes with the back side too. Any of those uh, trailing threads, there's a name for these and I can't remember it off the top of my head. But snip them now because your scissor will, will go right along that stabilizer far easier than it will um, once it's off. So remember we use tearaway stabilizer here and that just means it's going to tear away. And don't be afraid. It's not going to, it's not going to hurt anything. You can, you really can just tear it off. Okay. So here's a good example. I've got a few more of those threads here, but look, See how if you, if you leave it, you'll, you can get some of this happening where the little loops of the towel start to come away. And then you have to just kind of trim those too. So don't rush through, make sure your threads are off before you uh, start tearing the stabilizer off. I find the stabilizer tearing somewhat satisfying. <laughs> like you kind of really can get at it. Okay, you get the you get the idea. And then on the other side where we've got the water soluble stabilizer. Now, there's no way I want to dunk the whole thing into the water. You could and all of this would just melt away. But you can tear this too. Look, it comes off so easy. And really leave the water soluble stage or what's going to dissolve in water for all the little tiny, tiny bits. I would try to pull off as much as possible ahead of time. Just because um, if you were to leave all of that on, your water would be really kind of gluey and, and gunky because, you know, it has to go somewhere. But a little bit is not that bad. So pull off as much of the big bits as you can without pulling the loops of your... And then I like to just take 
Jump stitches. Thank you, Lori. Jump stitches. Yes. I knew, there, I knew someone would know that. And then just take a bit of, so you could just throw this in the wash, but I'm not going to expose you to the current state of our laundry room. So then I would just take a little scrap of fabric and with my hot iron, which I did plug in, but it's probably automatically turned off. Yes. I know they don't want me to burn the house down, but I also really need the iron to stay on. <laughs> Lots of water. And remember, it's just towel. It's not going to hurt it. And then you're going to put just a scrap of fabric. So I just have like a scrap here. And I like to touch it with, and you can even see here where the, um, where the stabilizer is, is most active. Honestly, I don't even need to really touch it with the iron. It, it is coming off. But if you're having a hard time getting it off, take the hot iron and anywhere that there's stabilizer left on there, and it'll pull right off. And then you can just fluff it up like normal. And that is how you embroider onto terry cloth without losing your stitches down into the pile of loops on the fabric. Cool, huh? Towels is one of my very favorite things to customize. Um, I like changing them out for the seasons. And you know, so often we, especially this week, if you've been participating in my homemade event, we've been doing tons of tea towels and we tend to think, oh, I can embroider a tea towel, but hand towels in the bathroom look great customized out for the season. And we often shop for these, um, but these are easily, easily uh, made yourself when you've got an embroidery machine. And as long as you know the add the water soluble stabilizer trick on top of your design, it really will yield you the kinds of results that you see in the store. Um, I only paid $5 for this towel. It's a cute, cute little pink towel, but it was just plain, you know, just looked like this side. Um, but what a difference. And this is really what you're paying for in the store, especially around holiday time. So I hope this has ha like uh, inspired you to maybe give embroidering on terry cloth a try. I know we're sort of you know, we take baby steps on these things and um, tea towels are a little flatter and more uh, crisp and, you know, easier, let's say. But when you know the tricks, this isn't that hard either. So yeah, I hope you're, you're inspired. And if you're thinking about an embroidery machine and you want to tune in to the sewing show on TSC, we've got coming up Sunday and Monday, April 11th and 12th. We've got this machine, the Janome 9850. We're going to have just a few I think they only ordered 30 for the whole country of the S9s. There's, there's, you know, a few hundred of these. Um, and there's going to be the air thread serger and the cover hem machine. And Thursday this week, I'm going to do a full live demo. Maybe we'll make the kids, the girls really need stretchy leggings. So maybe we'll make leggings and I'll show you how to use the serger and uh, the cover hem machine and the difference between those two stitches, especially on stretchy fabric. So that'll be a cool one to watch too. So we will see you then. And if you have any questions in the meantime, you could message me here. I'll go through the comments now and um, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye.